Well, hello again. We're going to do another book review now. Um, I'm doing the McCork Organization series th this week, starting with the second book, uh, which is called Deadline for McCork. Or, M or McGurk, I, I guess it's pronounced. I've always called him McCork when I was a kid, but I think it is, it, it is McGurk. Now, once again, before I even start, I want to thank Meg uh, Hendricks of Meg Reviews for her um, invaluable support and, and advice make, making these, these book reviews. I, I couldn't have done it without her. Um, also, I, I, I want to tell you I'm changing the format a little bit. These are mysteries, and I don't want to give away the, 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 the villain, as it were, of, of, you know, of the, the ending, because that kind of give, gives away the book. So what I'm going to do is discuss the characterization, my impressions, and my childhood memories. So, um, first, another thing before I forget, the first book is actually The Nose Knows. I had that book, I lent it to someone, and they, hadn't re they haven't returned it, and it's actually a little more expensive than I thought it was on eBay and so forth, so I can probably, I'll wait until I, until I find one cheaper. So the second book, Deadline from a Quark, it's really their first mystery when they have a mystery or when they have a detective organization. So let's go over the characters and the organization a little bit. Now these books were written for really early um, readers, I'd say age 8 to 12. The characters in this in this particular book are, um, most, of, most of them are 9 going on 10. So again, most of the time with, with these children's books, they kind of give the protagonist around the same age as the, as the potential reader. So let's say, I guess, an eight eight to twelve year olds. Th th those are the people who this book was really geared for. So um, even the mysteries, the the crimes are not going to be. Um, they're never violent crimes, and in the early books, uh, they weren't even really crimes where the policeman would be involved. So McQuark is the leader of the McQuirk organization. He's a he's a redhead boy. He's very intelligent and he's very um he's very good at deducing things and he has good leadership qualities. Uh he's also a little arrogant. He um he's a little rambunctious. He does he's a little impulsive I should say. He doesn't really um he goes into things sometimes without thinking. But again he has a good heart. And all, all of the kids have the have a good heart and all of the good guys in the book. So uh Joey Rockaway is his best friend. He's the one writing the books, so basically, I mean, obviously he's not really, it's really written by E.W. Hildick, but the books are written um, with, with his character being the one telling the story. So he's kind of the Watson of the story. Um, he's, he's very studious, he's um, very meticulous, but, um, uh, well, he has, he's a little opinionated at times, but usually his opinions are, will be in the narration. He doesn't actually say them. So it's kind of funny, like, listening, uh, reading and seeing what he, how he's thinking of people sometimes. It's nothing usually bad, but, you know, sometimes he has his opinions. Uh, Willie Sandusky, oh, I should mention, this is McCork with the magnifying glass. This is Joey Rockaway. Willie Sandusky, he's, he's the third um, character in the book. He's uh, not as bright as the others, but he has a super sensitive nose. Actually, his sense of smell is, um, honestly, it's unbelievable. I mean, it's, um, it's not even real, re realistic. It's kind of like a bloodhound, literally. So, um, I mean, there are times when he, um, when he smells things that are just impossible for a human to smell. But still, he's a very good character, and he has a good heart as well. And sometimes he comes up with insightful things, you know, um, but he's, he's not usually as intelligent as, as the LF3. And finally, number four is, 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 uh, Wanda Gregg. She's the only girl on the team. She's, uh, much more physical than the rest of them. She's a tree climber. She's very active physically. And she's actually kind of the muscle of, of, of the group, even though she's a girl. Um, the, again, this is kind of, turning that trope on its head, but it is realistic because at that age, like between like around nine, ten-ish, um, you know, the females were not um, that much weaker than males. In fact, some of them were stronger. They had, uh, females had a growth spurt earlier than males a lot of times. So anyway, this book, this particular book, what's it about? Well, um, Wanda actually, it starts out, Wanda does not like being the only girl. And so without asking McCork or telling anyone else, she put a, um, a, an ad, well, she made a, a sign and, and put it on their tree in the front yard stating that the McCork organization is looking for a female secretary. 
And so it starts off the McCork organization. The boys are just, you know, they're in the, oh, the, the headquarters is McCork's basement. So they're in the basement. And the basement's um, one of those basements that has a, um, a door to the outside. So they're in the basement and they hear this commotion and they go out and, um, and there are a bunch of girls there like between, let's say, 9 and 12, and they, they want to be the secretary. And McQuirk's like, I didn't ask for a secretary. And then Wanda admits that she's the one who did it. And McQuirk's like, oh, no, we, we don't want a secretary. And um, one of the girls, especially Sandra Innes, she's, a, um, she's kind of a pushy uh, girl, kind of a, I don't want to say bully, but a, just a very pushy girl who, um, who's, uh, the, who's kind of an antagonist uh, in, in the series in a way. But she, she really doesn't like that. She gets really offended, and um, she kind of doesn't... She, she was pushing, pushing the other girls around anyway and, and butting in line, and now she's kind of um, a little angry at what happened. And it's um, one side note I think was kind of funny. Joey asked Wanda, well, if you wanted to know a girl on the team, why didn't you want to know a girl detective? Why did you want a secretary? And Wanda's like, no, I'm the girl detective here. We, we need a secretary, <laughs> which is kind of funny. But anyway, um, so that happened. Then later, there are a couple five- or six-year-old girls that knock on the McCork's door, on the basement door, the headquarters, and they tell McCork and the gang that their dolls have been stolen and they want to hire them to retrieve the dolls. So McCork at first is just kind of like, well, this is kind of small stuff, but the girls are actually crying and Wanda's like, you know, no, they're really serious about this, you know, McCork. We, we, we should handle this because you might not think the dolls are important, but they're, they're important to these little kids. So McCork agrees to take the case. But before they can do anything... Um, there is a notice tapped on their door that says that the McQuirk organization stinks and, um, and, and, uh, and the dolls have been stolen by the mysterious Mr. Big and they'll be um, harmed if, if McQuirk doesn't admit that the organization is a phony and it stinks. So McQuirk kind of is excited and he's like, oh, we have a villain to, to, to work against. You know, th this is great. You know, we'll find the dolls and everything will be fine. Joey kind of warns him that that's probably not the way it's going to be. And it's true because uh, Mrs. McQuirk, McQuirk's mom, comes in and says, yeah, you really need to just admit that, that um, you know, that you can't solve it so that the dolls aren't harmed. You know, the, these little kids really want their dolls back. And McQuirk, of course, is like, no, you know, uh, uh, oh, the deadline's Friday. They have to do this by Friday. Uh, that's on the note. And McQuirk's like, no, no, we can solve this, Mom. You know, we'll, we'll handle it. And McQu and basically Mrs. McQuirk says, okay, you know, you guys try to handle it, but by Friday, if you don't if you don't solve it, you're going to have to admit this and um, just eat crow and let the dolls be um, returned. So the, uh, the basic storyline is the McQuirk organization trying to solve and figure out who um, stole the dolls. And it's a pretty interesting book. I mean, honestly... Um, like I said, it's not a, um, it's not an earth-shattering mystery, but um, it's nice. I mean, I, I, I like the way, I like the way, uh, the, the way the story is told, the way the story unfolds, and I also like the writing and the art and the illustrations. Um, of course, these being uh, nine-year-old kids, their um, their ideas are always a little. Um, a little different, and the kids talk like like little kids, you know. So um, they have these, they have really wild flights of fancy sometimes, and the illustrations show that, which is kind of fun, and um, it, it's fun to read. Actually, not so much in this one, but you'll find that happens more as the series goes on. Now, like I said, I don't want to give away the um, the ending, but there are certain suspects. There, um, three boys who um, kind of were, um, they're kind of. And they're kind of jerks to the McCurk organization. Uh, they're the main suspects. Um, and, of course, th um, there could be anyone else, too. Uh, so it could even be Sandra Innes, as an example. So the McCurk organization has to narrow down the suspects, has to try to figure out a way to, um, to entrap the suspects into confessing or doing something to, to entrap them and catch them in the act. So that's basically what the um, what this book's about. It's about McQuirk and the gang using their brains to try to figure out how they can entrap the uh, the, the the bad guy, Mister Big. And like I said, um, this is not um, and, and this is not a, a crime where at the end of it the police get a, a arrest a villain or anything like that. But the 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 baddie does get their comeuppance, and um, and the McQuirk organization is triumphant at the end. So that's, that's this book, Deadline from a Quirk. It's by E.W. Hildick. 
It's not valuable. In all words, if you go on eBay or Amazon and try to find it, I'm sure you can. It might be five bucks or something. It's not going to be really expensive. The only thing is they are kind of rare. This book, um, let's see, the hardcover was printed in 1974, I want to say. Uh, yes, 1974. And I think the paperback came out in like 77. So these books haven't been printed in over 40 years. So like I said, they're a little rare, but they're a good read if you can find it. I, I recommend them, especially if there's someone who has a little sibling, a nephew, or a child, and they want to um, they, they find a good chapter book that they can read to their child. I know with my mother, going back to childhood memories now, my mom read to me every night. We would read, um, well, we, we, we would read something from either the Bible or my book of Bible stories, and then we'd read something secular, and one of the things was the McCork organization. And um, I really enjoyed that as a kid, especially because we wouldn't read the, I mean, it's, it's, the book's 100 pages. It's not su super big, especially because there are a lot of illustrations in it, but it's not like a one-night read. I would say it takes maybe, well, reading now as an adult, I'd say it takes maybe an hour to read maybe an hour and a half. So reading out loud, especially my mom would put use different voices and we'd talk about it. So I'd say like maybe um, twice that or so. So we would read it maybe three or four, in three or four nights, or maybe even longer. I don't remember exactly how long, but you know, it's a good activity for a parent and child or an uncle and, and or uncle and aunt to a nephew and niece or, you know, whatever. If you have a child you want to read it to. Or again, if you just want to um, read some children's books or if you're like me where you want to just reminisce about some books you read as a child, it's a good one. Um, this actually isn't one of my favorite ones of the series. They get better over time, um, but it's not bad. And like I said before in my overview of the McQuirk series, it lasted for well over 20 years. So I read them all. I have, I have most of them. But I especially, I'm especially fond of the ones I read as a child. So like from the 70s and early 80s, I would say. So the deadline for McQuirk. So next time, what, what I'm going to do, like I said, I read, I mean, I reviewed one of the Bobsy Twin books the last week. This week's McQuirk. Um, the other two series I plan on going into are Trixie Belden and Three Investigators. I'm not sure which one I'm going to do next. I'm going to probably do it next week, but it might not be exactly next week. I'm not sure. Again, it depends on interest, on my interest and how much, um, how many views and how much interest I, I think it, this, this, this particular um, video series generates. But either way, they might be a bit longer because um, the Bobsy Twins and McQuirk, I'd say, again, are for... 8, eight to 12s, we'll say. Trixie Belden and um, the um, three investigators are for, I'd say, 12 to 16s or so. So the books are a little more involved. They're a bit longer. There are not as many illustrations or no illustrations. Um, with, the, with both of those series, I think like there were illustrations in the first dozen and a half books. So there'll be some illustrations, but then like in the latter half of the series, there were no illustrations. And even when there are illustrations, there might be, let's say, five or six full-page illustrations in a 200-page book as opposed to 20 illustrations, let's say, in a 100-page book or, or something like that. So anyway, that's what I'll do next time. Thank you for watching. If you have any comments, questions, or anything you'd like to talk about, please do so in the comments. I j another thing, too, while it's on my mind, I will ask this. No one's done this yet, but I still want to say this while it's on my mind. Please no bad language in the comments. These are family-friendly reviews. I, I really ask for people to not have bad language or anything with a double entendre. If you do, those comments will be deleted. Okay? Thank you again. Have a nice day.